Hey, how's it going everybody and welcome back to Rob's studio. I'm Rob Reap and we're getting ready to do another painting. Uh, we're going to tackle um, how to paint um, a little ocean scene, but the main subject of this, this painting is going to be how to paint um, rain actually coming down from clouds. Now this is off in the distance. We're going to put, put some, uh, some rain falling from some clouds. So let's just jump right in. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm doing acrylics today. I know I'll, I do a lot of oils, and uh, but I, I want to be able to do a full painting in this in this particular um, episode. So we're gonna we're just gonna jump right in and do um, a full full scale painting uh, with acrylics. All of these skills are totally uh, applicable towards oils. Uh, the exact same techniques would be used. The only difference is is you would have to wait a little while a few days in between uh, sessions to let let some oil paintings dry let let each individual layer dry now you could try it um you could try to do it wet on wet and that would be fine um that's certainly an acceptable style if you like that um but here with these acrylics today we're just gonna we're gonna jump in and do this full painting first thing i need to do is i need to actually put some gesso out and i'm using liquitex super heavy gesso this is what i use when i'm using acrylics this is what i use for my white um, i don't use um, white acrylic paint uh, hardly ever. And this gesso is good stuff. So, got this out here. I'm going to take my large, large brush that I've got. I'm going to go right into this gesso. Probably we'll have to have more before it's all said and done. Just gonna go ahead and start getting some good color mixed up. Lay my brush to the side for a quick second. I need to grab some ultramarine blue. I'm doing this all on the same palette. This is gonna be a very limited palette that we're using today for this particular painting. Some ultramarine blue. Let's throw just a little bit of orange onto our palette. I'm using cadmium orange. very little amount of that cadmium orange and the last little secret color I'd like to throw in here you can do a couple of different things you could either use um, burnt sienna or dioxazine purple I'm actually going to use a little bit of both and all these two colors are going to do this very little amount of purple dioxazine purple is what I'm using and burnt sienna now the reason I'm using these two colors they're going to gray this sky a little bit. I do not want a blue sky for this. We need a gray, kind of hazy looking sky that we can change values easily and, and get, get some nice clouds going. All right, so got my big two inch brush. I'm going right into my ultramarine blue. Just mixing this up. And if you wonder why I'm using a paper plate or styrofoam plate here instead of an actual palette, it's because I, I don't, you know, to me, acrylics are, are kind of a, they're not as high quality. So I'm not going to use a really nice palette. I'm just, I'm doing this to, to, um, to do a study painting. That's all I'm using this for. Purple, little touch of orange, and I need a little bit more burnt sienna. A little bit of burnt sienna. You can see the corner there. All right, we're getting a nice color. I want a little darker though, so I'm gonna go more into my uh, ultramarine blue. Put a little bit more burnt sienna. Yeah. That's a good looking color so far. Maybe just a little bit darker. Okay. Burnt sienna. And let's start laying on some color. What do you say? I'm going to start in always. I, I tend to start in the in the top right corner because I'm right-handed. And I've got my uh, paint nice and um, nice and watery so it's dripping on me, but that's okay. Tell you what. I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of draw off my brush a little bit. I've got a little, little towel down here. All right. And then start laying color in. Now 
I'm gonna, it's a little too gray, so I'm gonna add a little blue. Just throw some random blue here in the sky. Just a touch. I added a little bit of orange. You can see that warming happening. Little X strokes, that's all I'm using is a little X stroke to, to lay this color on. One thing you'll notice with acrylics that's very different from oils, um, for me at least, I tend to not be able to spread it as easily. Have to use more, feels like you have to use more paint to me, but. Okay, we're getting a good color now. Just quickly laying on color. Not too worried about leaving any strokes in there. That just adds character to the painting. All right, now at this point, as I'm getting lower to the rise, and it's kind of reversed since I'm doing, I want a little bit of sunshine over here in this corner, but I want my rain is going to be falling on this on this side of the of the painting. I don't want it actually painted um, where the whole horizon is getting rain. I just want just the deep horizon to the right to have rain. So I'm going to start to really darken this now. So I'm getting some more gesso. Again, I'm using Liquitex heavy body paints. Far superior to uh, to a lot of other a lot of other uh, acrylic paints out there. I really recommend using Liquitex Heavy Body, and no, and they're not sponsoring this program at all. I'm just that's my opinion. I'm adding a little purple. Hope you guys can see what I'm what I'm throwing on here. Purple, a little bit more orange. I'm going to add more white just to give myself more color. I'm going to need that. I'm going to add a little water. So I'm just dipping my brush into my water bucket. My water cleaner. Or my brush cleaner, I mean. Going in with more blue. More purple. And really darkening this. More blue. There we go, and then let's just grab as much of this burnt sienna as we can and really warm this up. May have to get a little bit more burnt sienna, but I think we're pretty close. Okay. Yeah, I think we do need a little bit more burnt sienna. So I'm gonna re, put some more paint out on my, uh, on my palette. Okay. Burnt sienna added to this. Yeah, now we're cooking. And we'll start laying on this darker color. Now the important thing is, is just to barely blend that into this top color. I'm going all well past the halfway point on the canvas, and the reason I'm doing that, you never want to center your horizon. Um, no matter if your canvas is turned portrait or landscape, either way, you really don't want to have to, you really do not want to have that horizon at the halfway point. So, gone almost two thirds, probably a little bit more, and I'm just blending that up. Okay. Now, if you're wondering if I had a plan for this painting, it's kind of this is this painting is going to be an adventure for for both of us because 
I'm just making this up as I go along in my head, uh, and I hope a lot of you at home get to where you can do that with your paintings. Uh, if you're doing a professional piece, sure, you want to be able to compose it beforehand. I sketch out some of mine occasionally. I'm in rough sketches, but for a painting like this where I'm just having a little fun, doing some practicing, um, heck no, I'm not going to sketch it out, you know? All right, we need some more gesso, so I'm going to grab a clean brush down here, but I'm going to get my gesso jar too muddy. And I'm just going to go in and grab some good color. There we are. Okay. Now we need to start from this side up. We need to start kind of lightening this again. Need a little bit more water. There we go. We're going to add a little bit more orange just to give that little touch of sunlight kind of peeking through. You can already tell how the acrylics, if you're painting this along with me right now, you can tell how the acrylic paints just, they just don't blend like oils. And that's why I like oil so much better. But Oil, uh, acrylics can be terrific for practice um, and, and a lot of abstract artists love acrylics because they can work so quickly um, and, and many landscape artists like acrylics. Acrylics are not an unacceptable art form. They're really, you know, I've got some professional pieces that are, that are acrylics so don't be afraid to use acrylics for a professional piece. It's just if you're doing a painting, for me, my personal preference is that if I'm doing a professional piece um, I tend to like to um, use oils. That's, but that's me. You know, you may not be the same way. And you have to find your own art style. You have to find your own, your own little area of expertise. So everything I'm teaching you, please just, just take it and apply it in your own way. And I'm not a perfect painter. That I, I have some weaknesses. I have a lot of weaknesses, <laughs> but I love to paint, and that's all you have to be. You have to love to paint. Okay, so we got a good basic covering. Just blend out anything that doesn't look too blended, but for the most part, that's nice. I do want to bring this down just a little bit more. Okay. If you have something that's not blending very easily, just barely dip the corner of your brush in water and kind of pull it out. If you add water to these acrylics, they're going to they're going to blend. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, let this dry, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so while we're waiting on this to to get fully dry, it's already it's already dried a good bit, but we're going to go ahead and just lay in uh, the basic ocean. Um, we're going to do this with a few different colors. Um, the first color we already have on our palette, but we're going to need to add a little bit more, and that's ultramarine blue. So I'll go ahead and do that. Oceans can be very intimidating, but folks, if you if you ever if you ever pick it up, they are so easy to do. I mean, just they're a piece of cake. They really are. And it's it's not too. Um, it's not too difficult at all once you once you get the hang of it. I'm going to use ultramarine blue and a color that I I really do love, turquoise deep. Um, it's it's a a color that I don't use very often, but for oceans in particular, it's just an amazing color. I'm probably going to put a little bit of purple in here as well, but this turquoise deep is I'm going to use a good bit of it. And then the other other color that we're going to use is our our gesso. All right, I'm going to start off using uh, number 12 bristle brush. And I'm just going to go directly into some colors that I had mixed up from the sky. I already had a little gesso on my brush. So I'm going to pull out this turquoise. And look at that color. Can you guys see that color? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> it's, it's really, 
it's something else. I've got it. I haven't actually not purchased turquoise deep in oils yet. I need to see if I can try to find it. It's it's such a spectacular color. Now that's too light. Now, like that's that's kind of a uh, kind of a Bahama type like ocean. We want it darker, so we're gonna pull in some ultramarine blue, some purple. I'm actually gonna throw in a little burnt sienna just for fun. Yeah, it's looking really good. A little bit more blue, a little bit more burnt sienna. And that burnt sienna just kind of gives it a little earthy tone. Like for the corners particularly, we want those a little bit darker. So we're gonna paint this from the bottom up. All right, I've got kind of the color I want to start things off. I'm gonna lay my palette down, hold the canvas because I don't have any support up top. I don't typically like to put too much support on top. I like to have just the canvas just resting. Um, and I work in a lot of bigger pieces, so I'm kind of used to that because of the weight of the canvas typically will hold it down. With these, it's a little different. All right, so I'm gonna turn my brush. Instead of painting like this, all right, I'm gonna kind of turn it to the side and I'm gonna paint little banana strokes. Just little banana strokes, okay? I'm going to start them off a little larger near the bottom, but I'm going to move quickly and just paint. Just paint. This does have to go quick, so be sure to pay attention. And the first problem I've got to slow me down is bristles coming out. It doesn't matter what quality brush you buy sometimes. It, that's going to happen. <laughs> it's just going to happen. I talk with my art students in my class uh, quite often about that. They... They get a little bit concerned about bristles coming out of brushes and you go, I just got back uh, not too long ago from a visit to a really, a really famous art museum. Um, and I'm telling you, if you go look at some of the old masters, they're going to have the same thing and there's going to be bristles all over that painting. We want to lay on relatively thick paint here, so I'm going to... I'm just going to continually be pulling this out. I'm getting a little bit more um, turquoise deep in here now. Got a bad bristle in there. I'm having a bad bristle day. All right. Hopefully we can keep it out now. Now as you move up, you want this color, for, for this particular style of painting, we do want to keep the color um, relatively the same. Um, if it was a really sunny shot, we would want to lighten that color a little bit as we go up, but for this one, I'm not too worried about that. And what you're gonna find is as you start these strokes, these little banana strokes with the brush turned sideways, there's gonna be some wave shapes that start to form, okay? And watch this, if I can get the bristles out of here. Boy, I haven't had this many come out in a while. <clears throat> if you want to just grab a little bit of gesso and just pull a little bit of white in there, look at that, beautiful color starting to form. Now I want this, because my rain's going to be over here, I want that to be even darker. More bristles. I think it may be time for a new brush. I said that that's going to happen, and it will, but it shouldn't be happening quite as much as it is on me today. <laughs> but just keep painting. Keep painting quickly with this. This is going to. This is not uh, a super easy technique to to master, but once you master it, it's it's just it's so easy to see how it comes together. Look at that. I love that little hint of white. And I'm just going to barely work this in. I need to take it up to around here because that's where I stopped painting the sky. Boy, even more bristles starting to come out. 
definitely time for a new brush for, for old Rob. As you move up though, start getting those strokes a little bit a little bit shorter. If you want to, you can start using a smaller brush about this point. I'm not going to. What I do want to do is um, make sure that I, I start to level out a line. Doesn't have to be a perfect line, but it does need to be parallel with the bottom of your canvas. And if you paint this quick enough, like what I hope I'm doing, when you are done, you should be able to go back in with your white and really start to throw in those wave shapes. Now I got mine a little off, so what I've got to do, and I'm still having bristle problems, but I'm not going to change brushes because, oh well. So I'm just going to kind of get in front of this and Make sure I'm getting it semi-leveled out and grab some purple here, get some really dark color. You want this, this line relatively soft near the top too. Okay. All right. So we've got a decent ocean shape. We're gonna go in now with a little bit of white. Tell you what, let's switch brushes. I should have another brush somewhere in here. I'm moving now to a number six, I believe. Yep, a number six bristle. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of paint on it, a little bit of that dark paint, and then go into my white. And I'm just gonna start laying in some quick little shapes. And I'm talking, when I say quick, I mean like, just seriously, just little, little fellas like that. And don't overpaint them. Don't overpaint them. We're just getting some basic little wave shapes in here. I like that little bit of texture, so I'm just going to leave that. Again, they need to get smaller the further high, the further up you go. So actually, I'm going to put in some of these to have some bigger shapes. Yeah, that's looking good. Now, obviously, because the rain's going to be falling back here, that's going to be darker, right? So we don't want to mess with that too much. But over here, it won't hurt to have some little white caps off in the distance. Okay. Now, see, that's looking pretty good. We're going to do a few more touch-ups just to lay in some good colors. Think about the water moving, too. It's going to... It's, Water's a moving thing, and it's, while it may be lazy, when it's on the ocean, you know, it's, it's a powerful thing. What we're doing is we're creating dark and light areas. That's the difference. We're just creating dark and light areas, so I'm going to kind of pull my chair back now and take a good look at it. All right, I've got it a little, a little whoppy jawed. Easily fixable. Going back in with my big brush, getting my two darkest colors, adding some purple to that. And what I'm going to do is just get here again in front and just level this out. really 
make sure you try to get this at least eyeball level. So it does, you don't have to bring in a, a level and actually check it out, a laser level or anything like that. But All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to kind of touch up in here. My sky is still just a, just a little bit wet. So um, I'm going to work a little bit more on this ocean for a few minutes, and then we'll... We'll start to work on that sky. So now I'm going to go into my into my liner brush. It helps if this ocean's still a little bit wet to do this step. But I'm going to really moisten up my brush, go into some pure or relatively pure gesso. I, it doesn't matter if it has a little color in it. In fact, uh, this nice little turquoise color that's kind of coming out is not bad at all. You could add some green. Green would be another great color to add. Uh, Hooker's green, you could add that and really darken those corners. Um, create a really dark, dark ocean bed, ocean surface. So what I'm going to do with this this white now is just kind of make little little forms here on the canvas. And this is this is this is just kind of bubbles, all the fun little water washes that occur when the ocean's moving. I'm getting very thick paint on this and pulling things out. Just just having fun with it. Just find a feel for it and go. Like this this line right here is too straight. So we're going to break that up some. Pull out some water. That looks so much better already just doing that. I like this way, but it needs some, some little fellas coming off of it right there. Yeah, this is looking really good. Don't be afraid to just, just go after it. You know, that's what I do. Um, a lot of the painters in my courses that I that I teach, they have the same problem that I had as a young painter. They don't trust themselves with the with the with the brush, and you have to come to a point as a painter where you're just like, okay, I'm gonna do it, and if it looks bad, I throw the canvas away. And uh, I have I've thrown away a lot of a lot of paintings before because they just weren't very good when I finished them up, but you know. For every painting, every 10 paintings that I didn't, I didn't nail, I nailed one. And I've got several of them hanging up on my wall in here right now that are, that are oils that are drying or oxidizing at the moment, getting ready to, uh, to be ready for sale. And, and they, they look stunning because I've been doing it, you know, so much for so long that uh, practice truly does make you perfect. You know, I've heard somebody say it about golf before, that uh, golf was a game of luck, the, but they found that the, uh, the more they practiced, the luckier they got. Painting's the same way. There's a lot of luck involved in getting a really good stroke sometimes, but the more you practice it, man, they're going to show up more often. All right, so I want some little bitty fellas back here in the deep distance. Little white caps. These are actually really big waves, but just get the paint on the very tip of your brush and barely skim it. This is the stuff that a lot of people don't like to do is the fine details. I love the fine details. I truly love the fine details. Now, although this is dark back here and we're going to probably have we still need white caps, but they just need to be darker. They just, they simply need to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to darken this color. Yeah. Isn't that looking good? We need some off in the distance too. The 
there's still waves back there. It's just dark. So we just need to decrease the light value. I don't know how easy that is for you to see at home, but the smallest of color changes back there makes such a huge difference. I love that little bit of that little bit of color here in the dead center. This this part of the painting seemed to be really needing it. Just using a, a, a liner brush to do this. All right. That looks pretty good to me. Um, for a study painting, this is where I'm going to stop. Uh, if I was doing a professional painting, I would take it to about this point, and then I'd let it dry, and the ocean would sit there for probably another week, and then I'd start again with more detailing. But we're going to see if the sky is ready to paint, and I believe it is. So I'm going to wash out my liner brush and look at my fingers. Probably need to wash those as well because I've got bristles all over them that are dry and paint and all kinds of cool stuff. I'm going to clean out my number six bristle. I know a lot of folks like to use synthetic brushes for acrylics. That's fine if you want to. You know, I use bristles for all my oils. So, and it's the same technique. So I use bristles for my acrylics. The important thing to remember though is if you do both acrylics and oils, don't mix the brushes. Once they're used with acrylics, don't use them with oils. And once they're used with oils, don't use them with acrylics. Uh, they don't cross over. Once you get water in these brushes, they're, they're ready for water. Once you get oil, um, oil paint thinner in these brushes or oil paint, they're not going to take to water very well. Um, they have to age, age with their own kind, so, so to speak. And um, oil and water, they don't mix in the world of painting. All right. Got a relatively clean brush, but we're just gonna kind of pull out a little bit of this color, just kind of get it get it started. Grab some good white. This is now kind of a what I would call almost a seagull gray, and then grab a little bit of orange, like literally just a little dab, and get that going. Grab some more white. We want this a little bit lighter color. In fact, I'm going to kind of start a little separate pile over here. Okay. Now we want this white with just a little touch of that warm orange in it. Okay. In fact, I think I need a little bit more white. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here with this brush, just grab some pure white. Pull it out. More orange. There we go. That's looking better. Kind of a very light, it's on the white side, but it's almost a creamsicle color. But it's when it once it goes on the canvas, that's not what it's gonna look like. So we need to start building a big old cloud. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna layer our lightest color, which is the top, and I just want this this thing just booming up here. This is a big thunderhead, okay? Big thunderhead going totally off the canvas, and I'm just doing what's a technique called scumbling, not overworking the paint. See, I'm leaving a lot. See that? I love that little that little area that I just dropped in. And then what I'm going to do as I go further down, I'm just going to kind of fade it out. I think we're going to need more paint. Okay. Don't worry if you get a little bit too much orange in there. That looks like sunlight. It's a good problem to have.
like I said, don't be afraid to carry this cloud completely off this canvas. It will really make a difference. I love the colors that I'm getting right now. Such a mixture of oranges and whites and man, I mean that really, that's what you love. You know, that's why you do it. You love to just see it, see it start to come alive and it's coming alive and it's coming alive in a hurry. And I'm just layering some colors. I'm not even worrying about very dark colors yet. I'll do the dark colors here in a few minutes. Out here near the edge, it's going to be a little wider because the sun's popping on it a little bit more. Keeping a defined top edge. But the bottoms, I'm scrubbing out. Maybe some little fellas just kind of floating off. Love that. Now we need a little bit more white than what I've got in that area. So what I'm going to do is just grab some white, throw it in there, grab a little bit more white, throw that in there. Are you loving this? Because I am. <laughs> it's looking really cool. Really cool. And we, folks, we are close to this being completed really close What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of give this a little edge. So down here, that's going to be the edge. I'm not going any further to the left with this cloud. And the only way you say, well, when, how, when do you know you've gone far enough? you got to develop an artist's eye and just know when it's done. I got a little bit too much orange in my paint there, but that's, that's okay. We'll, we'll use it. We'll use it. We'll give us another big... Kind of big orangey fellow right in here. And again, this is going to make it feel like there's a lot of sunlight pouring onto that cloud from the top. Notice I'm not filling in every little spot either, right? Again, you need to learn this technique called scumbling. So important. So very important. Okay. So we are about done with that little section. Now it's time to start dropping in some dark color. So what we want to do, we're going to start in the same muddy pile. You notice I have not changed paper plates once. Everything on this canvas has come from this one plate. So important to learn how to become a dirty painter, okay? You don't worry about too many different colors getting there. That only creates um, contrast, and that only creates more, more lifelike effects. Everything's not perfect. It's not all perfect colors. So don't worry about that. So we need to mix up some blue, some purple. We almost want it to be a blend between this and this. I need more purple. So I'm going back down, gonna grab some more purple, put it on my palette. Same brush, number six bristle. Grab some of that purple, get it, get it mixed in here. Okay. 
really mix it in to your brush. You want your brush to be the same color. So that's actually looking like a good color. I'm just gonna kind of test it. Get it on here and just lay in some, some colors here. Actually, probably a little too dark. So I'm gonna grab some white, start pulling it out. A little bit too much of a contrast. So what I'll do is I'll grab some white and kind of mix it into this. And just start pulling this out, blending it into what's already still wet here with this white that I've already laid on. Now I'm getting the right color. All right, this is underneath. So I just wanna take this same color that I've gotten mixed up already and start rolling it in. All on this side, scrubbing it on, dry brushing it. You can hear that brush, I'm just scraping it. You're gonna go through a lot of number six bristle brushes doing this way, but it's the best way that I've found at least. Maybe pull in a few little colors out in here just to kind of bring this color into the rest of the painting. All right. Level it out near the bottom. This cloud is gonna be relatively parallel to your ocean. Scrape it on there. Make sure it's faded. All right, take that same color. We're not changing it at all. Get you know, a decent amount of paint on your brush, but not too much. Instead of doing this, turn it and change how you're holding it to like that. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull straight down, okay? Just pull it straight down. I'll try to keep this where you guys at home can see it. I don't have much paint on my brush anymore. So I'm just really scrubbing on dry, I'm dry brushing paint. I'll add a little bit more paint. Dry brush this. Don't just fill all that in. Rain falls in sheets. If you've ever looked out of your window during a rainstorm, it comes down lighter at times, it comes down heavier at times. All right, maybe just another little bit right in here. This needs to be blended out a little bit more. That's not blended enough. At this point, now it's time to look around the canvas and see what doesn't look good. I'm gonna pull back and look at it. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to bump the camera. We'll get it there. All right, I think we have a complete painting. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. If you don't mind, if you enjoyed this video and wanna see more awesome content, more painting lessons, uh, from here, from, from uh, myself here in my studio, I'm Rob Breep. Please hit the uh, thumbs up button. Give us a like. We want to get as many likes as we can, so please do that. Also, please, if you enjoyed it, uh, maybe hit subscribe so you can be, uh, be notified on YouTube whenever more awesome content is uploaded here on this channel. Um, once again, I'll be doing more stuff. 
uh, live here from my own studio. And um, this has been an acrylic painting, doing a little little rain rain scene. Uh, till next time, though, I'm Rob Reap. Uh, thank you for joining me. Keep painting, and God bless. <music>